as I got happier and happier with rejection, got bolder and bolder in the face of rejection, not just bold, but started to see it as beautiful and fun and that rejection's part of the game, not just with women, but with everything, with money, with success, with health, that you're gonna fall down over and over and over again on the way to the journey. Matter of fact, if you're looking for a wife, everybody you date is gonna be a failure till the day you get married. And you could even have one of the two of those be a failure too. So let this sink in for a little bit. The game is played in rejection. This is one powerful secret. And the key is to learn to get over rejection. To see rejections is another step or another success. So I'm back. I have a question for you. What do you think is the one key secret that's going to radically shift your life this week? What's one thing you can do that'll make a huge change in the way you relate to women? What's the one thing you could do to allow yourself to become the most powerful version of yourself? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? There's a lot of key secrets. I think it's a bunch of 1% is to realize, but let's, let's take a look at one, the ones that'll have the biggest impact. I'm going to start with one today and we're gonna do different videos. What's one key secret that can radically shift your life? That key secret is to become really, really fucking good at failure. The better you are at failure, the better you are with women. What do I mean by that? Do you think a guy that's really good with women is good at failure? Do you think he takes rejection personal? Think about this for a minute. Do you think he gets reactive to rejection? Does rejection hurt him? No, I don't think it does. He might get a little like, oh, that sucks, I really like that girl. Or she was really cute. But how quickly does he let it go and move on? Well, but there's a cute girl. And if you ask him at the end of the week, how many times you get rejected, he'll be like, what? He probably won't even think about that. He'll just think about all the pretty girls he had fun with. A matter of fact, I would bet that a lot of what you would see as a rejection, he doesn't see as a rejection. Let me give you an example of this. If he gets rejected by a really cute girl, let's say they flirt for a few minutes, have a really good conversation, go back and forth, but she says, no, I'm not single, whatever, and kind of moves on. He's going to be like, yeah, she liked me. Yeah, she thought I was sexy. I had a really good friend like this. Back when I was first really developing my skill set, I, I was a young coach for uh, another company. Uh, one of my friends, Christian, we used to call him Captain Jack. We used to call him because he looked like Captain Jack Sparrow. And he had this delusion inside of himself this delusion that every girl loved him and thought he was sexy. And if they got near him, he didn't approach women, but if women got near him, he knew they'd get attracted. That was his mentality. When I sit there, women are gonna get curious about me. They're gonna wanna know who I am. And he had this powerful sense of delusion. And so when he flirted with a girl, he'd pull her in and say, oh, you're, and he was really forward. He'd be like, oh, you're so fucking sexy. Look at you, look at you. Oh, I know you're turned on right now. And they'd be like, what? And let's say, he got 50, 50, like say, say there was a percentage he got and a percentage he didn't. And the percentage he got, we're like, wow, really? Oh, you like me? And he'd be like, yeah, look at you, you're so sexy. Come here, you're touching them, pulling them in. And those girls would light up. They would love the attention. They would love the forwardness. But let's say another girl was like, sorry, uh, I gotta go and runs off. It was, it was not having it. What do you think Christian thought? He thought she couldn't handle the turn on because he was speaking his Bulgarian accent. She couldn't handle the turn on. She couldn't handle how sexy it was. We had so much passion. Could you see that? It, it overloaded her and she ran off. And that was his attitude. So that one little attitude shift can be so powerful in the way you see your life. Now, I'm going to give you another example. My friend Jason, who was probably one of the best I've ever seen and totally fearless when approaching women, he used to blow my mind. He kind of broke my mindset about what was possible. He could have been my brother. He looked a lot like me. And when I met him, I was like, oh, this guy's my same height. He looks like me. This is interesting. But yet he's probably one of the best I'd ever seen with women. And I wasn't at the time. I had a friend, I'm 5'8". I had a friend who was 5'11". And she was really tall. She loved to wear heels. And she's like, I'm Brian. And she told me one day, just randomly. And because uh, we were really good friends, I had all these girlfriends at the time, back when I was learning. She goes, Brian, I could never date you. And I'm like, why? why? What's wrong with me? And she's like, well, you're just too short. And she was digging at me and she was poking at me. You know, that thing that girls do, testing. And that would really hurt me at the time. I would take the rejection personal, especially when she offered it up and I didn't ask her. Now I would probably take that as her flirting, but back then it hurt. And so here comes Jason, he comes into the house 
and he meets her for the first time. We're all hanging out and she comes over to me and she says, he's sexy. And then we're out for a little bit and she's like, you know, I do him. She used to say that all the time about guys. She likes, I do him. And I go, wait a minute. He's short, he's the same height as me. And she goes, yeah, I'd make an exception. And that was a big reality shift for me. Suddenly what happened inside my mind was I thought women really respond to who you're being because this guy looks like me. He's about the same height as me. And he's got all these women attracted to him. We went out to a bar and I can't tell you, like the bar was not even crowded and he had so many girls under his arm because he was ballsy, he was bold, he was forward. And the number one thing we talk a lot about turn on energy and he was overloading the turn on energy with women. And what he was doing with it, he's bringing so much turn on that he was pushing away the girls that didn't like the turn on, the ones that weren't down for that, they wouldn't move fast. And he was pulling in the girls that did because that's what he wanted. He was all about, you know, women that wanted to be sensual right away, that wanted to play. He wasn't necessarily always about one night stands, although that was fine for him. He liked dating girls, but he liked dating a lot of girls at once and really getting to know and going deeper with them. And so he had this sensual energy he would just lead with and start touching them right away and start leaning in with her. His turn on, his turn on would be on and he'd be looking at girls and penetrating energy and he'd be owning that energy. That could be you. That's all embodiment. But the other thing also was when he got rejected, he didn't buy it. I remember one time this girl rejected him she was like pulling back and he's like, I don't believe you. She's like, what do you mean? He's like, look at you, look at the way you're looking at me. Look at the way you're looking at me right now. Look at the way you're touching my hand. You're, you're attracted. And he was just owning it. And he said it so calm, so matter of fact, that I could see her questioning it and being like, and it was really interesting. And then next thing you know, he's like, wait a minute, I'm gonna go talk to this girl. And he almost just walks away from her right there. And is like, oh, I see another girl I wanna talk to. He didn't give a fuck. He wasn't afraid of rejection. He wasn't afraid of what people thought of him. In a sense, he was putting who he was on the table and saying, I can ha not only handle the tension, but you can reject me all you want. It doesn't change how I feel about myself. So think about this. We've got Jason and we got Christian, both amazing with women. And they get this, this, this energy of not being afraid of women. I remember one time I was on a date with a girl and I was sitting there with her and the same thing. I remember we were holding hands, we were touching, she was cuddling up next to me. There was a lot of interest. We're sitting right next to each other. And I remember I leaned in to kiss her and she pulled back. And I was like, interesting. And I remember saying to her, I, I went to the bathroom, came back and I just decided to call it out. I was like, so what's the deal with you? She's like, what do you mean? I said, well, you love cuddling up to me. You love touching me. I can tell you like me, yet you don't move forward. And she said to me, she looked at me and she thought about it. And she looked at me and goes, well, you know, I just don't feel it. Something's missing. As i am got my leg on her thigh, as she's holding my hand, as she's kind of leaning into me. And I looked right at her and I smiled. I remembered my body's whole body smiled because it, it just was such bullshit. And I said, I don't believe you. And she said, what? I said, I just don't believe you. Look, look at this. And then she laughed and she smiled. And she looked down and she blushed and I could tell it was on. The rejection didn't bother me at all. I knew there was something else going on that she either wasn't telling me or wasn't really, and I think she wasn't really truly consciously aware of. And I think I know what it was. But what made me so excited about that moment what really turned me on was I was, I'm com she was gorgeous, by the way, and I was completely unaffected by the rejection. Matter of fact, I was happy with it. And that was the key. As I got happier and happier with rejection, got bolder and bolder in the face of rejection, not just bold, but started to see it as beautiful and fun and that rejection's part of the game, not just with women, but with everything, with money, with success, with health, that you're gonna fall down over and over and over again on the way to the journey. Matter of fact, if you're looking for a wife, Everybody you date is gonna be a failure till the day you get married. And you could even have one of the two of those be a failure too. So let this sink in for a little bit. The game is played in rejection. This is one powerful secret. And the key is to learn to get over rejection. To see your rejections is another step or another success. I'll give you one more example. One of the other coaches here was really wanted to go snowboarding with us. We snowboard all the time. And I was watching him watch all these snowboarding videos of guys flying through the air and riding goofy, riding regular, spinning, turning, flipping. And he's like, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be so cool. I can't wait to get out there. And I knew what he was in store for. He had this image of him flying down the mountain. And I knew if the first thing was gonna happen is he's not gonna know how to stand on the board, it's gonna be plunk. And then the whole way down the mountain, plunk. And 
And if he didn't embrace that and enjoy the learning process, he was gonna get really frustrated, which is exactly what he did. The whole way down the mountain, I could see him getting frustrated, falling down one, one uh, um, run after another, beating himself up because he had this image up here, but he was down here. That doesn't mean he couldn't be up there if he wanted to really dive into the sport and learn the subtleties and do the one percents and every day get to where he can toe turn and heel turn a little bit more and a little bit more until he's really killing it. But, you know, he quit after that. That's unfortunate. I, th I think there's other reasons he quit, but I, he still loved it. In the end, he loved it. He loved the experience. He appreciated it because it's such a valuable lesson in not taking rejection personal. Because in a sense, you could say that every skill we learn, we have to fail at before we become good at it. So I just want to let this sink in. What is your mentality with rejection? And what if you could truly and deeply learn to see rejection as beautiful. Rejection is just tension, right? We talk about tension all the time. So I'm gonna ask you for the next week, I want you to walk around and look for rejection in the world. Take it in your journal for the next week, journal in your journal, every rejection, and then I want you to journal how beautiful it is, in what ways it was beautiful, how the tension of that rejection felt amazing or felt interesting, how you learned something from it, how you're growing, or how it felt shitty, but, you're, but I can accept it fully and I'm growing and learning from it. And if you want to learn to get through deeper aspects of emotional stuff and you want to develop real emotional intelligence, which will help you move through your limiting beliefs faster, definitely check out our Revealing Mastery course. That information is invaluable. But for the next week, let's do this journal challenge. Every day, get three to five rejections in. Uh, I don't care if they're with women, asking for a raise, saying something that you've always needed to say to somebody you know is probably going to make them mad, but it was really important to say. And just notice how it feels and then journal what you're learning from. Journal how you feel. Can you accept it? Just accept that rejection and then journal what you learned about it. And start learning to really appreciate rejection. And then see, after you journal, journal what you learned about it, see if you can journal something about it that was beautiful or interesting or something, move it, move it up the emotional scale, move it higher in vibration. And that's your goal. I definitely wanna hear how you did with this. Make sure to comment in this video. We really wanna hear your comments about this. Uh, because those comments are important and they really help us to figure out what you want. We have somebody monitoring them all the time if I'm not. Uh, make sure to like the video because your likes really help the algorithm. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss one single video. And I want you to remember only the confident really live and enjoy this one little secret. Take care.